Welcome you all on behalf of His Excellency Nana Adodam Kufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana, and the entire staff of the High Commission to this evening's reception to mark the 63rd anniversary of the independence of Ghana. Today, since March, is special not only for Africa, but also for Ghana, because this Ghana was the first independent country in sub-Saharan Africa. And on the day 63 years ago, when President Kwame Nkrumah declared Ghana's independence, he made a statement to the effect that the independence of Ghana is meaningless unless it is linked up with the total liberation of the African continent. Presently, Africa is totally free. However, we have to put our economics beyond aid by making them robust and self-reliant. 
I believe in the achievement of this vision for Africa. If all of Africa puts its shoulders to the wheel. As a country, our journey of 63 years has not been without challenges. However, we could not have traveled this far without the support of our international partners, particularly the United Kingdom, which is undoubtedly Ghana's closest partner. We share the historical connections and close ties between our peoples. The theme for this independence anniversary is consolidating our gains. And this calls for a reflection on our past efforts as a nation and the need to consolidate the democratic and economic gains we have made thus far as we move ahead on track to improve the lives of our people. Ghana is a peaceful, stable, and robust multi-party constitutional democracy with its people enjoying the liberties and freedoms associated with a democratically free country governed by the rule of law. The administration of President Danado Damkwa Akufuado is committed to consolidating the macroeconomic and fiscal gains made over the past three years in government and is therefore determined to ensure that the country's public finances are managed prudently. It is for this reason that the President has advocated for a change in course and has consequently established the Presidential Fiscal Responsibility Advisory Council, whose core mandate is to advise the President on ensuring compliance with fiscal laws, regulations, and targets, among others. In acknowledgement and recognition of the private sector as a significant partner in development, government continues to support the private sector with the needed catalysts to enable it to operate profitably, grow, and become more globally competitive. Thus, a three-year business regulatory reform program has been initiated which is aimed at amplifying the benefits businesses located in Ghana can derive from the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, whose secretariat is hosted by Ghana. Excellencies, compatriots, ladies and gentlemen, three years of the Akufuado administration has witnessed the restoration of macroeconomic stability through a robust fiscal and monetary policy regime and a prudent management of the public finances. Inflation has dropped steadily from a rate of 15.4 percent at the end of 2016 to 7.9 percent at the end of December 2019 and to 7.8 percent just last January the lowest since the commencement of the Fourth Republic in 1993. For the first time in over 40 years, Ghana has had a fiscal deficit below 5% of GDP. And for three conservative years, and also for the first time in over 20 years, the balance of trade, that is, difference between our exports and imports, has also been in surplus for three consecutive years. Indeed, the strength of Ghana's economic fundamentals was confirmed recently by Moody's ratings, which gained, changed Ghana's sovereign rating from B3 with a stable outlook to B3 with a positive outlook. The international investor community has recognized these developments, resulting in Ghana being the largest recipient of foreign direct investment in West, with West Africa, which will hopefully translate into the creation of more job opportunities for our people, especially the youth. Also, with a banking sector cleanup, Ghana now has a well-capitalized and better managed financial sector 
resulting in banks now increasing their lending to the private sector. Excellencies, compatriots, ladies and gentlemen, over the last three years, the Akufuado administration has made significant strides in the fight against corruption. The legal framework for fighting corruption has been strengthened with the enactment of a Witness Protection Act, Office of a Special Prosecutor Act, Right to Information Act, and a New Companies Act, which has provided for a framework for the, for the establishment of a beneficial ownership register so that one can really know who owns a company, even though you may have surrogates. In the fight against corruption, the government of Ghana hopes it can continue to rely on the assistance of relevant institutions and agencies in the United Kingdom to assist investigative agencies in Ghana with the requisite information to support government's effort, not only to punish wrongdoers, but also to recover monies misappropriated and saved offshore. The government of Ghana seeks to convey a strong message that it is no longer business as usual in Ghana. On 7 December this year, Ghanaians will once again be going to the polls to elect a president and members of the eighth parliament of the Fourth Republic. Government has undertaken to give the independent electoral commission the fullest financial and logistical support to enable the commission to discharge its constitutional duty. While, as is usual, the election in Ghana is going to be keenly contested, I believe the characteristic good sense of the Ghanaian electorate and all stakeholders will prevail so that once again, Ghana will have a free and fair election with the outcome being a true and proper reflection of the will of the people. Excellency, I am pleased to state that the United Kingdom and Ghana have enjoyed strong ties of collaboration in various areas based on shared values and commitment to democracy, development, peace, and prosperity, and particularly at this time, climate change. The relations have witnessed renewed impetus over these past three years. The UK-Ghana Business Council, established in 2018 with the Vice President of Ghana and the UK Minister as joint chairs, continues to meet biannually in Accra and London. And the next meeting, as you just heard, will be held in London next month. Last year, UK and Ghana exchanged high-level visits with notably the visit of the Vice President of Ghana to the UK and the visit of the Foreign Secretary, Right Honorable Dominic Raab to Ghana. And of course, early this year, the United Kingdom hosted for the first time an African Investment Summit with the delegations of 21 African countries, including Ghana, attending. His Excellency President Akufuado had opportunity during the summit to hold bilateral meetings with the Prime Minister and, of course, the Duke of Cambridge on matters of mutual interest. And as we have been informed, signed agreements to the tune of some 326 billion pounds sterling for infrastructure and other areas. Madam Representative of the UK government, Ghana wants to be a strong partner of the UK in the UK's drive 
to deepen its relations with Africa. To our compatriots in the United Kingdom, I salute you for the excellent manner you have been conducting yourselves in your host country. Ghana is proud of its nationals and is grateful for their contribution to nation building both in Ghana and the United Kingdom. And of course, here in the United Kingdom, British of Ghanaian descent have continued to distinguish themselves. This evening, we have, we have two women of Ghanaian descent who are justices of the High Court. They are here. And in the last general election, we had two, Ghanaian, two British women of Ghanaian descent being elected to parliament. Madam Abna Oponasari, I think she's here. And Bell Ribeiro Adi. We wish to congratulate them on their election. Last year, Ghanaians in the diaspora, together with persons of Ghanaian descent, African descent, responded positively to the call by the president for the year of return. The dividends were enormous. We will continue to count on the critical role the Ghanaian diaspora plays with its varied experiences working abroad. Excellencies, distinguished guests, compatriots, ladies and gentlemen, I now invite you to raise your glasses and drink lustily to the renewed and deepened Ghana-United Kingdom relations and the peace and prosperity of the people of Ghana and the United Kingdom. May God continue to bless our homeland Ghana and make it great and strong. Thank you very much. If I may say so, the progress has been amazing. Freedom House's report yesterday put Ghana as the top democracy in West Africa. And the UK has a strong and deep relationship with Ghana built on our Commonwealth ties, our shared values. And as we can see here tonight, our people to people links of diaspora of 250,000 and uh, quite a strong Ghanaian representative, representation in our House of Commons, our House of Lords, and indeed in our, in our cultural life every day. And we also have very strong relationships in trade and prosperity, regional security with Ghana's peacekeeping, climate change. We share so many common goals. The UK government has over 400 million of investments in the Ghanaian private sector, which has been used to secure nearly 2 billion more private sector investment. And last year we saw an increase in Ghana's exports to the UK, up from over 650 million, up, up to 650 million from 422 million the year before. So it's a massive, growing relationship with deep, powerful roots and strong momentum. Our partnership on trade has gone even further. And I'm delighted to say that when the president was here in January at the Africa Investment Summit, he and the prime minister announced over 320 million in new deals, as well as signing a partnership with the London Stock Exchange. And these deals focus on infrastructure, including roads, hospitals, airport expansion, solar-powered water filtration projects, renewable energy. So massive achievements across the board. And the next thing is keeping up that momentum and what we do next. So we're very keen to continue to support Ghana on improving ease of doing business via the Business Investment Enabling Programme and to support the Ghana Revenue Authority so that we can take this to even higher levels. And the UK Ghana Business Council is one of the means that takes forward this progress 
and I'm delighted to say that that forum will take place for the third year running uh, this April, focusing on economic development, job creation, and trade and investment. Through our partnership in the Commonwealth, the UK is working with Commonwealth countries, including Ghana, to support initiatives such as She Trades. And we also have a very close relationship on climate change. And as you know, in November, the UK will be hosting COP26, a milestone for ambition, cleaner energy, more resilient future, supported by green financial systems. And we're looking forward to working very closely with Ghana and others of you here to find the best ambition and the solutions to that. So finally, I want to say that throughout my career of over 20 years in the Foreign Office, I've visited Ghana many times. I've been with the Prince of Wales, I've been with ministers, I've been on business trips, and I've been for a little bit of tourism as well. And the, the warmth and the closeness, and as you can see, the breadth of the relationship has always been really clear to me then, and it's been really clear to me tonight as well in the welcome I've received. So thank you for inviting me here to celebrate with you. And I would like to propose a toast to UK, Ghana relations and 63 years of independence. Thank you. Thank you.